Well, welcome to my exhibition here in Richard and Polly's Gallery in Muka, the whole of September 2018. Um, I'm an etcher. This is an etching plate, and it's been etched, and I've done rubbed the ink into the cracks and then onto the handmade paper and put it through a glorified mangle, and that is an etching. And I sign them. They are not key clay prints, which are mere photographs. There's a numbered. This is a real uh, piece of copper and etched. Now, here in the gallery, as Richard, the owner, will pan round and show you, there are pictures from all seven of my books. Right, well this one was the one I did after doing the Shropshire Lad, called An Elegy in Arcady, and there were 24 pictures in it, and they're engraved on perspex with an engraving tool. You know what they look like. They're like a boat as a shape, a hull, and you cut into the perspex. And they're all to do with Hausman, A.E. Hausman, who wrote a Shropshire Lad, and I wanted to write a biography of him. And um, there is, in fact, somewhere here, a box of all the etchings from the book. So... There we are, they're black and white, there weren't any colour ones. If we're talking about colour, my very first book was this one, A Shop for Lad, um, and here's the slipcase cover for it, which I'm proud of, and, well, I don't know what to say, but it took me, they all took me about five years, so I'm 68, 69 today, and I've been etching since I was 18, non-stop, sometimes 18 hours a day. Last night it was 22. That's why I'm yawning a lot. So, and they re they're photographed sometimes a bit darker, so I'm pleased here in the Hart Lake Gallery above the old school in Muka to show these etchings, a few etchings from my seven books which have had the action photographed and reproduced in the book. Um, so there you are, uh, black and white ones, colour ones. There's no point in having too much colour in a nightscape. And I wanted to show the Elizabethan barn here. There's a bit of hand painting on this one, which I just could not do it as an etching with a fourth plate. There were three plates there. So I painted with acrylic on each of the hundred etchings. This is why I work through the night. I don't watch any television, but I love doing this. Um, and the Rekin, um, oh, Caradoc, Caradoc, who was a... We're on the borders of, and he said Spain, of Wales and Shropshire, and Caradoc was a... Prince was taken to London, taken to London, taken to Rome in chains. So there we are. These are just some etchings, but you see the additions now. There are a hundred and all that, and of course it, it virtually got me a house. It certainly got me a car, because you, you know I work my socks off to make a living and uh, pay for all of these with my hands. Every line on these is done with a needle. I'll show it to you in a minute. This is my latest book, which is set in southeast France, above Nice, uh, in Provence. Uh, a beautiful, warm country with some terrible French drivers who would have seemed to like using their horn more than their mouths. Uh, they use both, actually, at me. And so I don't know what to say, because the nice thing about art is the pictures speak for themselves. But I do drawings first, and then I do, then I work out the colours. So this one, which is, looks the simplest, is in fact, I can't remember how many plates, certainly two. And if I had a blind person here, and this was taken out of the glass, he would be able to feel this olive tree, which the girl, my girl, who I had my first kiss with at 14 or 13, God, was it, was it eight? I can't remember, but anyway... She um, is a Corsican picking violets, and the tree there 
is rough because I rub ink into another plate and when it's dried, I put... I run the bare plate through the press and it pushes the colour back. I've done it a few times that. It's not a gimmick, it's perfectly allowed. So there are some... This is the biggest in the book. Um, olive trees I love. These are all olive trees. Olive trees, olive trees. Pine trees in the square at Terezia Loop. Basically, this book, which is called La Route des Violettes, which is all the, the Road of the Violets, it's actually called that. Um, has olive trees and pine trees, and that is Tourette is above. It's in the hills anyway. So there, are my hero and a heroine, um, sitting under an olive tree on the way back. He cannot marry her because she's a novice or near enough in a monastery, and. He hasn't got any spirituality, so the abbess will not release her. But he has a, a visitation, which is something that happened to me, so it's basically autobiographical, and was convinced that there was a god, and so he won the girl. And that happened, the visitation took five minutes, and it changed him for the whole life. It changed me too when I had mine. Now, now we're moving to... The Glorious Trees of Great Britain, which is 167 etchings. Prince Charles wrote the foreword, kind of a really good one. So when I'm talking about a tree, a, a, some sort of alder, fan-shaped alder, it's literally called a fan-shaped alder, growing at grass more shores, I like to have humanity, so we've got a fisherman pulling a trout out, uh, and rather a volcanic looking hill behind. Probably a bit of an exaggeration there, but the waves are typically lake waves with a strong west wind. One of the biggest. So obviously in this book, couldn't we, we couldn't put the etchings into the book and bind them, which I've done with quite a lot of other ones, and sold them for thousands of pounds each. This one was made into a 250 page book by John Murray, who sold the firm out and my book just before it's put in for prizes, because I have won prizes. This one is a myrtle of all things, and that was my wife, my late wife, and my brother posed there, and he's touching the tummy, and there's the first, the first one. So there's Kate just about to be born, Christopher on the ground, and again we bring in humanity into the subject. So you have oak, pine, larch. And that is interesting, because that was a Weymouth pine. Lord Weymouth went to the Rockies and found a completely different species of pine, brought it down to Kew Gardens or somewhere. Anyway, I studied it, and then I moved it to Weymouth Bay. Um, and I, I love going down there and painting the sea. So there you have the light on it. This is in Strensel Common, which is silver birch, basically, on a lovely evening. The children were schooled near there, so I knew it backwards on how to paint there. I paint first and draw first, and then I have the references when I start the long, boring etching process, which becomes quite exciting when you actually rub the colours into the metal. Sometimes I use four plates. This one is interesting. This is um, a hickory. There were 12 brought over from America and left in Ant Antrim County. Or was it Londonderry? No, Londonderry County in Northern Ireland, quite near the Giant's Causeway, which I had a wonderful swim. And um, there's one left, and that was it. So I went there and etched it. And that's in... South East Anglesey, New Forest is just um, pine trees and the ravens here, it's nothing but ravens in the wood, fly to Ireland and back every day, they say, for grub. I don't know why they like the cliffs of Ireland more than Anglesey, but there you go. There are loads of 
or every bit of U U United Kingdom I did actions in for the book. And I was given 20 years by the publisher, John Murray, and I did it in 15, because I really uh, got the bit between my teeth, I loved it. And the gallery only kind has of bought one of those, which is a sycamore tree growing in Brixton in South, well, South London. Now it's a two million pound house. But it was lovely, and there was some Jamaican uh, descendants walking, the son and the, and the father walking with it, singing songs as they went along in their white hats. Just a touch of humanity in them. It's very important, I think. So, we've gone the trees, Shropshire and Provence, and there we go to our native Wensleydale. We start with farmers. I was obsessed with the farmers. Um, three farmers. Arthur Metcalf, uh, Tot Iverson, a sheep dealer, his son's taken over, and John Tennant, all from near me, all good friends. I sculpted them as well. Anyway, I did that from the sculpture with light on it. And you put a barn behind. Then we have a, a just Castle Bolton with an ancient hawthorn. Then we have a curious thing happened. It happened again this year when the blossom was out early and the hay fields could be cut early. So you had actually blossom out instead of waiting three months till uh, July. The second week in July, they used to take the hay. I could do that at the same time. Here is Penn Hill a hill, uh, again in Wensdale, and you've got the Suffolk ram in the bottom right. I should use the Swaledale ram, but he wasn't about. Um, evening picture, and in here you've got something old-fashioned. The old, I want to do a slightly sentimental picture of how in, we're in Swaledale now, so they used to use horses, two horses or one horse, to pull literally a sledge. There were no wheels, so we had a harness, and that white stuff is actually the hay. And there are two people in a white shirt, you know, pushing the, putting the hay on the sledge, and then taking it to a barn. Can't see the barn in this picture, but it's somewhere down here. There's the gate going through, there's the lad looking. There's the beer that you always had about five o'clock when very little work was done after that, a pity. But... And there you've got the Irish haymaker. There are two there, one there with a beard. <clears throat> big fields. Can you imagine cutting it all with scythes right up to 1950? Well, they cut it with scythes even after. Um, and I put in a, a, a lot of Dale's things like Adelbruff, Kilsney Crag, which is a tall cliff um, just in the top end of Wharfdale, and the lovely blue light. In this etching, I had to hand colour every single piece of blossom. I did it red and then I suddenly realised that, that the blossom, when I say hand colour, I got acrylic and I put red berries on, but I discovered that red berries weren't out really at hay time too much. The blossom was and it comes quickly and goes quickly and that's what I did there. These are martins, about 12 of them in this picture, house martins, which are very popular in the dales. So, and this is a picture looking the other way to Penn Hill. So we've got one looking sideways on, sideways on at Penn Hill, and then we've got it from the Leyburn end. Um, the reason these hills are flat top like Cape Town is because simply, Cape Mountain, is simply because there was harder rock on top of soft limestone. Everything was eroded, you can't imagine, but the Eildon Hills by the Tweed was in fact huge volcanoes twice the size and they've just eroded but the plug of volcanic stone is what's left. It's um, on the borders of Scotland below Edinburgh, well below Edinburgh. So these are etchings again quite complicated. These are some of the four I did when I first came to the Dale to serious, be a serious artist. You've got buttercup meadows. Now they put get rid of the buttercups a lot. They don't all, they don't a lot in some of the fields around Muka here. And they were jolly good for cows, the buttercups, are full of goodness, but now they want um, rather green, very green rich grass to feed up the stock. Blue is the colour on them. You mark 
lot of sheep, different colours, red, blue, black even. And I have, someone said, you never see a cloud that black. And then he came to me about four years later, he said, I've seen so many clouds that black. Double rainbow, interestingly, they're red on the outside, the usual colours to violet. And you start the other way around when they've got reflected rainbow. Red, right the way through to the pale. Plovers I love. You've got, anyway, that's the dale. That's a famous drumlin called Lady Hill, with trees on it. Planted for Queen Victoria's, I think, 1895 Golden Jubilee. And then, and this is my dog, my first dog when I was in the Dale, called Winnie, who was a wonderful dog. Mole Hills, we forget about, but that is my dog running after a hare. You can just see the legs. And you're looking up to whores. It's It's been like that today, rather grey and autumnal. And that's the, the viaduct at Apposet, which is in well, Western Wensleydale. Basically, I just did a few lines and then I painted with a brush and oil paint onto the plate. And I did, I just printed 15. The printing takes ages. I can't say I like doing it much, but then, <clears throat> so we've done five books, and the sixth book is this one, which is my penultimate, Sonnets for a Siren, which I will get published one day. The red dot means I've sold it. Um, quite interesting, I saw a fox lit up it in the evening light, just like this, and it went bright orange, and then the little ones were running behind it, so that's what I put in. And it went with a sonnet that I wrote. I wrote 26 sonnets, I did, or 27 sonnets, I did 26 uh, etchings, that's quite complicated. In the end, I got some acrylic on all 50 of them and blobbed in the yellow. And that's snowdrops, I adore snowdrops. And there's a wedding in the church at Hardraw. And that was um, Sonnets for a Siren. Well, there's the siren on a rock, which I drew in Brittany. My daughter posed. Um, and there's the, a sexy scene where you've got a woman lying on a rock, like a mermaid or something, <coughs> wearing a T-shirt only, and you've got the sunset, and you've got the wind blowing away from the shore, making the waves spume backwards, and that was drawn in Cornwall. I'm proud of that, and this had to be in the book too. Great Shoals of Leaves, I call it, which is olive leaves. Can't think of how I got away putting an olive tree. In. It's all sea-based, really, but the one or two sonnets, it all made sense. And then we'll just finally move to the Lake District, this one, the Illustrated Book of the Year in 1991, again, an average of 30 etchings in the book, all to be edition. The big one is in an oil painting frame. I'm surprised that's not gone, because in London I sell it for just about £2,000. Here I've got it for £495, and the frame cost me £200, so I won't be making anything from that one. Um, but, you know, there we go. Beautiful light, isn't it? The Lake District. Not as nice as Wensleydale, of course. I'll just show you um, a studio, the studio I use. This is my studio. I'm trying to think. I've got a big window, like a weaver's window in Huddersfield or Halifax. So I've got lots of light. Then I have a hot plate with a Bunsen burner. So there's the gas, is someone in wood whittle room. I can't think where he's, oh there he's put the gas tank. There's my palette. There are my inks. I don't know what A is, I imagine. Hot plate, that's the hot plate, because you must rub into your metal. You have to rub the ink into hot metal, otherwise the ink won't stay in the, go in the lines properly. There I am, having inked up a plate, putting it on the press bald-headed peers, and then this is how you make plates, ignore that, but there's a water tub, 
and another assistant of mine blotting the paper here because ironically for printing ink, oily ink onto paper, the paper must be soft. So you have it soaked in water so it's really soft and then get all the water off but the paper's still got the, the it's still soft, it's still got pliability and then the ink sits really nicely into it. You can make a wonderful etching but if you can't print it you might as well not begin. It took me three years to learn how to print properly and four years to learn how to etch properly and I must have done, with the printing, I would say I printed, gosh I don't know, 5,000 or 6,000 times so it's taken up a lot of time although I like to do big paintings all the time. So there we go. There we go. This finally, I must show you this, it is the original drawing for this etching and on the floor you can see May Plum Blossom in the correct colours really. So I couldn't resist because the gallery owner here, Richard Walls, uh, is an imaginative photographer. I thought I'll turn the scene into a bit more exciting, a bit of light in the valley, a bit more light there. Get on my game, my lovely house martins and the daffodils out and the tree. A bit more drama than that of the original idea was just to do it normally with lots of sunlight. Piers, when I, when I look at that, that picture, mm -hmm. what, I, what I see is just a sense of movement. Good. And it, the landscape around here, there's movement everywhere, whether it's in the sky mm. or whether it's the wind blowing the trees or whether it's the paths. Mm. And, and this particular picture has that movement. A lot of your pictures do, especially the trees have good, so good. much movement in them. And um, I wonder, is that something that's, that attracts you to the place, that sense of movement? Is it, yes. is it part of your style? Is it? No, I, I love... Look, I think there's an etching here. You can probably see it from where you are, but there's an olive tree on the right in the, the French scene, which mm -hmm. has got no movement in it, just the church tower. But if you look at the other olive tree I've done with a village called Tourette oh, there you are. Here's one with the wind and a blizzard. There's the, the leaves are moving because there's a slight breeze at night. And there's a flipping great, what do they call it? Tramontan round there, or the Mistral is also nearby, but more of the Rhone Seine corridor around Marseille. But the Tramontana from Italy comes down from the hills. And I love doing trees with the wind. Here you are, here's another wind. You know. You've got, I love movement too. You've got clouds, rain, a bit of rain, you see. And you've actually got the watering things there. And the, the reason we chose race mm. um, as the exhibition poster was again the sense of movement. Good. Yes, that's which, right. Which um, I don't know how rare that is in etchings as opposed to. Do you know? I think it is quite rare. I've never thought about it before. The photographer's got the, the thing now with all the fumes and the wheels spinning and out of focus and all the rest of it. But that's just a girl on a motorbike racing to meet her boyfriend with a trailer behind and a bit of fumes. And uh, so, and there's a sunset. So the movement is as though, well, she's racing against the sunset and then coming back and the road wiggles there. And that's Bio, Biot, B-I-O-T, which is a village Another church topped village of really ancient houses as though they'd grown out of the rock it's set on. Because remember, the Turks up to about 1850 would raid this coast all the time. So they'd be doing it a long time. Anyway, there so we go. I think I interrupted. You were going to show us there. Well, Going back to um, my plum, plum Blossom, I did this in pouring rain, this drawing initial rain. I don't think I even held an umbrella, maybe a flat hat. But I had to work out roughly what the blossom was like. 
And I never threw it away because my girlfriend said, it's rather nice that. So there is the actual scene as a photograph. I don't use the photograph except to confirm detail. And it brings out the redness and the blossom. My first time ever after 20 years, I've got loads of plums from this tree, a lovely hot summer. And there is, is that, yeah, that's a painting I did of the scene, a big one. And I reversed it so I could work onto the metal um, by copying the whole painting. You can see a line, I sometimes put some lines and then I can get everything. It took me two months just to etch the plate so with the thousand etchings I've done, you can see how hard I work and have to work. And if you do, obviously in a computer, I can reverse the photograph using Photoshop of my painting. And therefore, if I put a pine tree that side and the blossom this side on the plate, when it runs through the press, that'll be on the right, correct side. And as you can see on the floor, the blossom there and the lane. So I was using high tech to get things right. So I'm not quite such a Luddite as people think. Anyway, I just photographed the books here and you can, you can see. They've all been done in editions of 4,000. So you've got the Wordsworth book here, which won the Illustrated Book of the Year. And that picture there is I've made the etching, um, which you can see at the top right up there. Even um, some publishers do it slightly too dark, but you, you know, I have real control if I do the printing myself. There's a busy plate, Bolton Abbey. And again, this picture here is uh, in the book. So what they did was they photographed my etching. And that's how they did it. That's how they do it. This is the Winsterdale book. I don't think the farmers is actually in it. But um, there are plenty in it. There's some nice pictures. Typical Dale stone wall and a typical busy sky in the summer. There's a bit of movement there. I think there's a rainbow. Not too obvious. And that's a nice book. None left, of course. They all sold out within a two years. Um, the Glorious Trees of Great Britain is a bit different. Uh, we've still got lots of colours here. Now this one, on page 123, actually number 149, I think, the new Beforest one. Literally, you can see it if he raises the camera on the wall up there. And notice how different it is. The, I think I forgot to put the white with a matchstick round the blue to get the waves right in that. And it's, um, but there you go. And there are people sunbathing. There, the girl, the boy, and the husband. And you put, they planted silver birch in front because it's quite a hardy tree. And when the pine's growing, it can hold the sand back and protect it. So there, there are kamikaze trees to protect the growing pines. So there we go. Fantastic. Thanks very much, Pierce. Not at all. Not at all.